So good morning, February the 15, 2016. This is CISG 114, Section 1, Web Technology and Life. Today is day number 7 in week number 4, immediately after the Chinese New Year's holiday. So let's get started. Good morning, welcome back to this class. So finally, we are at the beginning of week number 4. Okay, I sent you the teacher's message earlier yesterday. Well, just help to remind you that there is something you need to do by the end of this week, and actually by the end of the first four weeks of the semester, and actually the six weeks already, <coughs> but we can't only the week, but we have to come to class. So, if you come to this teacher's message, you will understand which pair you belong to, and actually you know it well before today's message, and, and if you check the middle environment already, your peer discussion forum has already been ready for uh, at least two weeks. Um, and so it's time for you to get started. Um, you can actually finish the work um, in this week, okay, because it's the first learning contract. It's not so much. So check your peer identity here. So suppose you belong to peer number 10. What you need to do is you have to go to um, this particular link here called Pair Online Discussion Forum and look up the specific pair name, okay, because you have more than one link. Now, actually, each, of, each one of you should be able to see two links, the name with your name and also the name with the pair name. Now, remember, if you want to engage your learning partner for discussions, you must choose, you must choose this pair link, okay? If you choose your own name, you can only type something there, you can see, your pair partner cannot see that. If you want to engage your pair partner for discussions, only the two of you could be well informed, you must select this link, okay? Suppose you belong to pair 10, you have to select an pair link. Remember, each one of you, when you come to this particular link, should be able to see two choices. The first choice is your name, the second choice is your pair name. You must select the pair names link discussion forum in order to get start your discussions with your learning partner. Okay? So that is what is expected. Okay, having said that, you have to understand that in the assignment for the first learning contract, uh, what you need to do is, uh, let's come back to the resources later, you have to prepare for yourself ten, uh, six items, not ten items, I have to, I have to change it. Item one will give you four points, that is your individual online journal. You can uh, select the four journal which you're supposed to have finished in week number one, week number two, week number three, and also this week. Okay, you just need to select one journal, okay, not four, you don't need to submit four, okay, one. The journal that you're going to submit is based on only one topic, one topic, and what is that one topic? If you look at the reading list on the first four weeks, you have four reading lists, and in each reading list, we have a number of questions, and each such question represents one topic. In other words, you have about 10 topics on all the four reading lists. That means 10 questions, about 10 questions. But what you need to do is just one question, okay? Uh, select it on any one of the four reading lists for the first four weeks, okay? And so your journal is based on one topic. So we are interested in only one topic you're going to submit, and you need to submit it uh, before the end of this weekend, all right? So we say that February the 20th is the deadline, but normally is extendable to the 21st. That means the end of Sunday, all right? So, um, and then the second thing is, once you've already finished the journal, you're supposed to share the journal in the peer online discussion forum that I just mentioned, and engage your learning partner for discussions, all right? And of course, you need to help your learning partner to engage in the discussion of his or her topic. So basically, in your learning pair, the two persons and two sets of discussion topics, all right? One from you and one from your learning partner. And so you just need to copy and paste the discussion forum details into a Microsoft Word document, just as what you need to do, to copy and paste your journal into a Microsoft Word 
documents, submit the document. One document, the second document, all right? And then what is called a report. A report is nothing more than an organized um, the management of your work in your journal and also including the uh, forum discussion. But we do have a guideline for your report. So when you click on the guideline for report here, you can see that what we expect from you is some sections in your uh, in the topics of discussions. Basically, the report contains two topics, one from you and the other from your learning partner. And each one of you, when you prepare your topics report, you need to think about the following items. So that is the format of the report. It's not that difficult. It's just the way to structure your thinking to help you to manage, to organize your the student discussions. All right. So you just need to follow the guideline. So the report contains two topics, basically two separate parts put together. Uh, we call it the cooperative work because it's two separate topics, one from each of the two students in your pair. So you create a report based on the guideline, your partner creates a report based on the guideline, and you put the two reports together. So it's basically, uh, we do not call this collaborations yet, we call this cooperations. Collaborations means one piece of work done by two persons. Uh, but in this particular case, you have two topics, and one topic done by each of the two students in a pair, so it's cooperations, all right? So, and then the item called blog, now that is a very important thing because after you finish your journal and after you finish discussing your journal topic, which is really popular, and after you've finished writing the report of, the, of your topic and reading the report of your fellow students topic, you need to come to a conclusion of what you've learned. And the blog is a refracted blog which tells you, or which tells anybody who reads the blog, something about what you learn on the topic, all right? So normally it's not more than 500 words, okay? But um, I say it's not more than 1,000 because more of students tend to write long um, passages for the blog. It's okay, but it's more than 1,000 words, okay? So um, it's something that, it's, that has to be concise up to the point. And when a person reads your blog, we understand what you learned from the topic. So you must name the topic in your blog, all right? And if you have finished writing your blog and you discover that, oh, there is something I really want to do next, so it's time for you to express what you want to do next in the proposals, uh, in which you also give four forms, uh, not many, but proposals basically include a title of what you want to do, three specific questions of what you want to explore with your title, and two to three or at most five references and one simple paragraph of telling why you're interested in the topic that you want to do, all right? So this is uh, basically what we call extensions of the learning. And then a uh, simple meeting minute which, it's, which tells the, uh, the negotiations between the two of you in your pair about what to do, when to meet, and how to help one another in accomplishing uh, the specific uh, learning contract, number one, in this case, you can see the six items here. Uh, I'm going to use some example reading minutes here, so you can click here and you can read some examples. So basically, it's the six items, and so here I just tell you what is meant by an online learning journal, which has actually been shared with you in the previous teacher's message, in the second bit's message, in the third bit's message, but once again, in this um, message here which will give you enough of the guidelines of what you need to do uh, in the specific uh, assignment. And the pair online discussion forum give you a little bit more guideline, particularly you need to follow the online ASAP details which we introduced to you before the end of the um, uh, week number three. And then uh, you, your blocks are the three important things. And of course the report is important, but the report is just a Foundations of your learning journals and also discussion details. So basically, this forms the teacher's message number four. Now, when you get back to uh, the the week here, okay, let me show you. Uh, you can see that we are in week number four, day number seven and eight this week, okay. 
And this week, we're still in the inquiry-based learning theme. And we have to help to understand the meaning of information literacy and competency. And we'll come back to that later on today. But first of all, let me point this out to you. This is where you need to submit your work. Now, as you can see there, uh, these include the submission link for your online learning journal. When you click on this, you can stop submitting your works only during this weekend. Okay? You cannot submit any time earlier. So the coming weekend will be open for you to submit things. Uh, journals, pair discussion for detail, what you need to do is just copy and paste, observe an example minutes later, and then the discussions report, all right, and then the personal block, okay, and then the proposal, and then the meeting minutes, okay, so after you have submitted all this item by this weekend, okay, starting this Saturday, and the deadline will be extensible to 11.55, some days, so two days time to submit your work, and then you need to complete the student feedback questionnaire for your first four weeks of learning. Okay, so this is a very concise and simple questionnaire. What you need to do is just check, 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 right? And then if you want to know what exactly you have to do, I've given you some student sample work for learning contract number one in the past semester. So you can come here and can read some of the work done by students. For example, this is the journal that my student call this name, and then his question is selected from week number one's reading list, remember the four reading list, is what is information security? Okay, and then it shows the source underneath this particular question called what is information security, and then he wrote some of his personal discovery, okay, and he said, my personalized question is, what is information security for us? And then he discovered some information, he wrote some answers there. But my interest is mainly on your observations. Uh, you must read the source, and you have to take some information out of the source. You have to provide some interpretation of your personal questions. And finally, what you can learn from this. So it's basically a very simple example of a journal. Is it doesn't have to be long, but whether or not it's, it's, it, it has to take all the information that is required, um, it takes a while to look into it. Okay, but remember, the journal just gives you four points. Normally, students would get between three and four points unless you did not follow, follow this format. So, this is a very important format you need to follow. And my suggestion is you need to put in more thinking, to dig out some of your observations in the form of bullet point list, and then your questions, you've discovered so much, so you need to provide your own interpretation, these questions of your own. You do not need to provide an answer, actually. This is, uh, I, I find this is very interesting, the student love to provide an answer. And when you do a journal, actually, it's not so much the answers we're interested in, it's what information have you discovered? What question have you come up with? Very important. Okay, so that is the journal. All right. So the next example you can look at is the discussions. You can look at the discussions. So you can see that I've copied and pasted the discussion forum uh, between two students in a pair of last semester. Um, the Kenyan's question is, "What is digital divide in the 21st century?" And he copied and pasted some of the uh, sources that I provide, and then she shared the journals, okay, and then this is the start of the discussions, and Kira, it's Gillian's Pablo, and Kira would like to share her journals too, and then after sharing both journals, they start up the discussions by coming up with a lot of discussion threads here, uh, you can see the exchanges between the two students there, now these discussions are supposed to give you some sense of what is meant by engaging or not, or discussions are important of interest. And you do not need to follow through exactly as to how many threats I need to provide, but you have to uh, be sensitive to your partner's questions. If your partner would like you to respond to him or her in a specific area of the observations or a specific context, be sensitive. Pinpoint your answer sometimes. That is a very important thing you need to do as a partner. 
All right. So you can see that this is in a long discussion uh, on the two threads uh, posed by the two students here. Okay, you can see that they even talk about the report here. So, so much for the example. So after that, you can see um, again uh, something more that is called the report. The report mainly contains two topics. One topic from one student in a pair. So in the report, when you follow the format, suggest that you can see something like this. This is the name of the students. This is the name of the popular. And then this is the uh, topical page on the specific topic. And they provide the content in the following the guidelines that, of the report writings. And then they wrote something on their own and they tell what they have learned from the topic of discussions they did. And so you can see that it's basically two reports put together as a one after the other sequence. Um, as long as you follow something like this, it will be uh, good enough because you are just galvanizing your engine to learn how to engage yourself in the topic of interest that you choose. Uh, in the specific context of this course, you know, for learning contract number one, you have four weeks reading list, uh, close to ten topics for you to choose one, and also for your partner to choose one. So you can see that uh, what you can do on a specific report, which is based on your journals, based on the discussion forums details. Okay. So at the end of that, you can see that uh, I can also show you the blog. The blog is a very uh, concise way to tell your learning experience of that period. So you can see the blog is not long in this particular student's blog. Um, she, actually, the machine, not he, uh, have done a very uh, technically right way to write a blog by recounting on uh, the journaling process, the discussion process, the writing the report process, and then the distillations of ideas in the blog. So that is, uh, that is something very uh, up to the point on uh, the specific topic on information privacy. And then you can see that uh, after the blog is the proposal. The proposal is what he or she would neither do after that. And then you say that, well, maybe information privacy is something we need to explore further in terms of the three questions they provide on this topic, and then looking at the whatever the references they provide. Um, actually, not they, he or she, uh, it's an individual proposal. Three to five references and give the reasons why this topic is interesting for him or her. So that it's um, what we call an extension of the study based on. Uh, your freedom to choose a topic. All right. So after the uh, after the um, the, uh, the proposal is the meeting minutes. Uh, the meeting minutes tells you uh, what the two persons in that pair have talked about and share. Uh, actually, one meeting minute is good enough. But in this particular case, I gave you two, and to show you how they uh, come together. Uh, do something together and uh, make decisions together. Uh, so you can do a very uh, concise way. They have a very good way of organize something. They follow up for previous discussions in class. And then they also um, put in a very brief this, uh, record of what they talk about during the meeting. Okay, so um, six, uh, six, uh, 4 a.m., 4 p.m., they decided to do this at 4.10, they did this, and then um, the uh, 4.35, uh, they did that, and then 4.50, they did that, and after that, they have made some decisions. Very good. At the end of the discussions, they decided to do this two things, and who are going to do it, and they also provide um, actions to be taken by each member, so that they have a follow-up um, day of the next meeting. So when you look at the next meeting, they do, uh, they do have a follow-up of this, and they present the finding, and so it's a very well uh, organized records of um, what they decided to do as a pair on the specific um, assignment. So um, this is an example of the works that I would like to give you uh, in the context of your first assignment. Now remember, 
all the things um, that you need to do start from your choosing a topic, uh, writing a journal, sharing the journals, and engaging your partner for the discussions, compiling the discussions records in the journal into a report, and put the two reports, one from you and one from your partner together, and then write a blog, and then think about what you want to do next, and then you write a proposal, and also tell how to do organize yourself for the work. Okay, so that is uh, that is the um, that is the assignment number one. So what do you have to uh, learn from this process? So basically we invite you to write a journal based on a critical thinking practice of OIA. You observe and read the source, you interpret, you ask questions, and you learn from what you did. Uh, by extracting bits and pieces of learning, and we call this applications. So that is the, the, the spirit of IBL, of questioning into something. And so um, here, when you come back after the Chinese New Year's holiday, uh, when we have to finish the last week of innovations, literacy and competency, so and then I'm going to make sure you understand the meaning of this exercise. Because you need to carry forward the learning into your second learning contract. So, how do you get started? So, first of all, I need to help you to understand the meaning of information literacy. Um, you seem to be given an assignment which requires you to choose a topic. And then you have to choose a source from the topic to discover the information related to that topic. So, in the context of information literacy, you are actually playing with information to extract what is relevant and to use that information in the context of writing something, which is in the form of your assignment, to demonstrate you know that particular something. So, it's a skill you need to learn. But before that, I must make sure that I have to make sure you understand the meaning of information literacy from the academic point of view. Right. When most people hear the phrase information literacy, they focus on the word literacy and assume that it has to do with being able to read and write. In actuality, information literacy, sometimes called information fluency, focuses on an individual's relationship with the information available to them in their daily life. Information is abundant and in more format than most people can utilize. And at some point, we all suffer from information overload. Information literacy is critical in allowing individuals to skillfully and knowledgeably take advantage of this new environment in their personal, academic, and professional lives. In this tutorial, the basic concepts of information literacy will be explored, especially as they pertain to students in higher education. The term information literacy was coined in 1974 by Paul Sierkowski, who noted that those who were information literate were able to mold information sources in order to find solutions to problems. Fifteen years later, a definition was created that is still in use by many educators and academic organizations today. The ALA's Presidential Committee on Information Literacy distinguished those qualities that make one information literate, stating that a person must be able to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate, and use effectively the needed information. Information literacy applies to everyone, both inside and outside academia. It's about learning the skills to understand and navigate this new information world encountered on a daily basis. If one can utilize these skills and effectively use information, they have fulfilled the primary goal of becoming lifelong learners. Those who have learned how to learn, who can always find the information needed for any task or decision at hand. Although it applies to everyone, information literacy will vary according to the individual. An undergrad will use very different skills from someone already in a career or those skills used in one's personal life. We will look briefly at information literacy as it pertains to higher education. In 2000, the Association of College and Research Libraries developed a set of five standards, performance indicators, and outcomes to define the information literate student. These standards touch upon five major components of information literacy, need, access, evaluation, use, and ethics. The first standard focuses on determining the need for information and recognizing what types how much information are required. This includes being able to define the need, such as in a thesis statement. It's knowing what resources are available for the particular subject and choosing those that will be the most effective. 
This day discusses recognizing the feasibility of conducting certain research while also coordinating a realistic timeline. The student should be willing to reevaluate and clarify their information needs throughout this process. The second standard focuses on accessing information. It may seem that students would be adept at this because of the abundance of information and easy to use search tools. However, this standard is really about getting the best information and not necessarily the most or fastest. Students must be aware of the research methods used in the particular subject field. They need to apply effective search strategies within appropriate tools to then access this information. Although there are always exceptions, it is important for them to try to use a variety of methods and systems instead of relying on a single research tool like Google. And they must be willing to refine their search strategies as needed. Finally, it is crucial that once found, students can manage these resources, being able to extract and organize the pertinent material so that it can be easily accessed while working on their final product. The third standard focuses on two types of evaluation. First, students need to evaluate sources to make sure they are legitimate and authoritative, especially in an environment where creating and distributing information can be done by practically anyone. It's also critical that students recognize bias, prejudice, deception, and manipulation within sources. Second, students need to evaluate the information within their source. This requires them to be able to understand the material, extract the main ideas, and know what parts would be best utilized in the final product. They should be able to take this information and synthesize it into their new ideas and concepts that can then be compared to prior knowledge, allowing them to test their ideas and theories. It is also important for students to investigate different viewpoints. They need to be willing to discuss their findings and research with other individuals and practitioners. Finally, based on the information gathered, students need to evaluate their strategies to determine if modifications will be required to get better or more applicable resources. Standard 4 is about using this newly evaluated information to create a product such as a research paper. In general, this standard focuses on being able to cohesively and adeptly incorporate and utilize the new and prior information and effectively present it in a way that is understandable and clearly supports the main thesis. Finally, according to Standard 5, students need to be aware of the ethics of information. This does not mean students simply need to cite their sources to avoid plagiarism, although this is an important point. Students need to be aware of topics that can affect their research and daily life, such as privacy and security, copyright, intellectual freedom, fair use, censorship, and the freedom of speech. They must understand and follow the laws and regulations surrounding information. They then need to acknowledge information sources using appropriate documentation style and citing accurately and as needed. These standards may seem overwhelming to incorporate into a single course. However, the development of an information literate student takes place over their entire academic career and will continue long after. It's up to the instructor to decide what standards apply and should be taught within their course. Eventually, all the standards will come together. The information literate student is not the creation of any single individual. He or she has been molded by a wide variety of people, including professors and librarians. Please consult the Rice Library Information Literacy Lib Guide. This guide will provide you with a full list of ACRL standards, performance indicators, and outcomes with corresponding sample activities. It also provides additional links and resources to make understanding and incorporating IELTS skills easier. Please ask the reference librarians at Rice Library about what you can do to make information literacy a more prevalent part of your classes. That's very good. So you got some ideas of information literacy. In your first learning contract, you take a look with you. How to prepare for the artifacts of your first assignment, which you have to complete submitting by this weekend. Information literacy is a skill that is behind a lot of the artifacts. But the first important artifact is, do you have a topic? Okay, in order to find your topic, you need to go through the four reading lists. Okay, reading list for week number four. Okay, reading list for week number three. Now take a look at two questions here, means two topics. Reading list for week number three. Another two topics are actually three topics. Okay, so five topics. Reading list for week number two. All right, so I have two topics, seven topics, reading list for week number one, and I have two topics, so all together, nine topics. So you have nine topics, that is nine questions to select one. 
to start up the journey of this topic. Now, what are you supposed to do? Think about information literacy. Information literacy invites you to learn the skills in the area of need. Do you have a need for that information? Okay, you have a need for that information because now you have chosen a topic, then you need to access to related information regarding that particular topic. Well, fortunately, I've done this for you already, so under each of this topic, I'm going to do some sources, so each one of these sources to meet you into discovering more of the topic. So if you have a need, you can access the information. The next thing you need to learn is to how to evaluate those information presented by those sources according to your need, okay? Evaluations of those sources involve a number of activity. Go back to the information literacy video you just saw in six minutes time to give you the guideline and then suppose you already evaluate some of the sources and discover many of the useful pieces that could help you understand a little bit more about the topic. The next thing you need to do is I need to use them. Use them. Use them means you need to extract them and put them in the proper positions in your personalized framework of knowledge related to that topic. But the last step in information literacy, the video tells you ethics. You cannot use them as if those are of your own. You must use them by giving credit to your sources, providing citations. Where do you got this? Okay, providing food references in your usage of the information. So, in your writing of the journal, besides the critical thinking step of observations, interpretations, and applications, you have to integrate your knowledge of information literacy, your skills of information literacy, into your whole IA process. And so, when we read your journal, we understand that you are very good in the sense of crediting the sources. You're very good in the sense of pinpointing what your topic is. You're very good in discovering and sharing the bits and pieces of information you extract from those sources. Okay? So these means you're growing up as a person who knows how to search and research and share your information. All right? So, having said that, let's get back here. Let me share with you a little bit more about what is meant by discovering related information uh, regarding the specific topic of your interest. What is meant by information literacy in the discovery process, okay?
just want to make sure you understand that there are steps you can follow when you look for information on a specific topic you choose for your journal. When you look for information to help your partner to answer the question he or she might pose in the peer discussion forum, there are steps you can follow. And the steps could be spelled out in the word discover. D for define, I for inquiry, S for search, C for collect, O for organize, and then V for verify, E for express, write a wrong, write a report, R for reflections, the wrong. All right? So basically, I hope that all of you individually, you have to go through the process of discovery on your own. About 100 years ago, John Dewey, a very famous philosopher education, tells us, true learning is based on a process of discovery guided by mentoring rather than the transmissions of knowledge. That means as a teacher, if we believe we can transmit my knowledge to you in class and you can take it that way, the answer is there. We cannot teach any man to know anything. We can only assist him to discover. All right. So again, John Dewey said that we continue to teach our kids today with the methods of yesterday. We're robbing them of the future. Okay. So uh, we are doing it a little bit differently in this general education course. The first assignment is meant for you to understand, have a first taste of what is meant by information literacy. Okay. To go through the process of discovery and share that with your learning partner learn how to combine things together and ask yourself what have you learned from this, okay? And of course, the many interesting videos you can help yourself such as this, what it is and who needs it, all right? So, but my purpose here is to make sure I can give you this much and I can motivate you to do a little bit more on your own. And my purpose in the first learning assignment is less, is for more, all right? Uh, looks like there will be many items you need to do, but for each of these items, I would like you to appreciate the skills you need to learn behind writing a journal, the skills you need to learn behind doing the peer online discussion forum, the skills you need to learn behind writing the report together with your learning partner, the skills you need to learn behind writing a blog, think about the discovery process, and also the skills you need to learn by writing a proposal, okay? And the skills you need to learn by having a simple meeting with the learning partner and keeping track of what you have to talk about. Okay, having said that, let's come back here. Suppose you know something about what is meant by information literacy, and you know the purpose of the first learning contract, which is on inquiry based learning. You learn something about how to question into something. You learn the process of observations, interpretations, and application in case you forget this. All right? So you need to go back to day number one. Okay? On day number one, somewhere here, I invite you to do a lot of the reading on online techniques. Okay? So remember, in the first learning contract, I'm helping you to focus on the first two items. Okay, we have not yet to the collaborate wiki yet. This will be the second learning contract. When you write the learning journals, when you try to apply the discovery skills here, keep that in mind, the old IA process. Okay, this is the guideline you can understand this. When you write the journal, I want to see your O, I want to see your I, I want to see your A. And you have to ask yourself, what did I discover from the source? What does it mean by digging out those related pieces of the source? And what can I learn from this? O, I, A. This is the process of writing a journal. And then you need to apply the same, or better say, extend the same O, I, A process and discuss with your learning partner by doing some elaborations on your O, your I, and your A, okay? And all of these will come together when you learn how to do the specific things on information literacy. 
Okay, now let me go back here on week number four. Now that you know something about this, okay, now understand this. All of these, when you're doing this assignment, you're actually doing something called research, okay? So what is meant by research? Let's go for the first one and then continue that on the first step. But this is very important. You're doing a research assignment. Hey there. Welcome to the Mercy College Libraries. In Let's just do that with one. Okay, that's it. That's about six minutes. Hey there. Welcome to the Mercy College Libraries Information Diversity Module Series. In this module, you will learn the basics about acquiring the information literacy skills needed to deal with the research papers and assignments that will be a big part of your academic career here at Mercy, regardless of your major. First off, what is this information literacy business? Glad you asked. Information literacy is the ability to recognize, locate, use, and attribute valid and credible information sources, including books, journals, magazine and newspaper articles, and an ever-growing variety of multimedia sources. In this module, you will learn the importance of understanding your assignment, choosing a topic that fits the assignment, narrowing or expanding your topic, creating a topic sentence, and determining what kind and how much information you will need. Research assignments can vary depending upon your class and your professor. But let's say you've been assigned a four to six page research paper requiring two outside sources using either the APA or MLA citation styles. What does that mean? Well, it's like this. A research paper or project usually means you need to construct an argument or take a position, make a case for it, your chosen topic. To support your argument, you'll need to find and use outside sources of information. An outside source is any information that is not included in your course text or class readings. When searching for information to support your argument, it is very important that you select what we call authoritative sources, sources that have credibility and validity. This is where things can get tricky because there is so much information available to you these days, especially on the internet it's becoming more and more difficult to determine not only what is credible and what is bogus, but even where to start. Not knowing where to go or what to do can become very frustrating very fast, leading to that dreaded modern malady known as information overload and you don't want to go there. Let your librarians help you. Before going any further into this, it's very important you understand the assignment and what your professor expects of you. If you are uncertain or unclear on any part of what's expected here, including how much time you have, get with your prop before pushing on, okay? Alright, so we've got this four to six page paper to deal with. Where do you even start? A couple of points to consider when getting started. Always try to choose a topic that interests you. Whenever possible, choose a topic that is related to your major. For the purposes of this example, let's say you have chosen the topic of bullying for your paper. What oh, are you looking at, butthead? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That guy. Okay, we've got to start. We've also got a big and broad topic. What to do? First, let's break it down. Brainstorm ideas on the topic. Throw some ideas in. Don't worry about whether they're good, bad, right, wrong, useful or not, completely ridiculous. Just throw down some thoughts that come to you when you think of bullying. Maybe 
going in the internet. Read about that a lot. Maybe going in social media, Facebook, etc. Wait, there's a word for that, isn't there? Yeah, cyberbullying. Okay, making progress. Maybe something on cyberbullying and social media. Sweet. Now what? Remember that in a research paper, you are creating an argument, staking out and defending a position on your topic. So what's next? Try taking your idea and putting it into a single topic sentence. For ideas to help you, Google or other search engines can be a great source. Search engines, as we'll talk about more in subsequent modules, have limited use as sources for academic writing like this. But they're a great source of ideas and a good place to start. For example, let's take a quick look around Google for cyberbullying and social media. Well, well, looky here. Same cyberbullying and social media has caused suicides. That's some serious stuff. What's being done about this? What can be done? What should be done? Wait. Do you feel the topic sense coming in? Maybe something like, what steps are being taken to prevent cyberbullying in social media? Dang, really good. Okay, here's what we've got covered so far. You understand your research assignment, what's expected of you, and how much time you have to do it. You've kicked around some ideas and boiled it all down to a topic, sentence, or question from which you'll develop an argument that will be your paper. You need to go and get two credible sources you will use to support your argument. In our next module, you'll learn about the open and closed web and how to use library resources to get the best sources for your paper. Oh, and those citation styles your professor is requiring? Don't worry about that just yet. We'll get to that too. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next installment. Okay, you just watched a very interesting piece which helped you to stop doing your assignment for your first wedding contract. What does it mean by choosing a topic from the full reading list in the first four weeks of the semester? I've given you a lot of freedom to do it, and then that is the point here. You are going to tell a story of your four weeks' effort in discovering some interesting topic of your own. And that is your research assignment. And the research assignment requires you to put into practice the information literacy skill that we introduced to you today, in particular, the discovery process. In the process of doing that, you should be able to write in a journal, which is the first draft of your report, or better say, the essential material that you're going to put into your research report, which is about four to eight pages. If you look at the specifications, that's more than 10 pages in my expectations. So you're going to share with the whole class your research behind that one topic that you learned in the past four weeks, that is say the first four weeks of the semester, and you're going to demonstrate you know how to look for information related to the specific topic of interest, and you're going to tell the story based on something very personal to you, that is your positions, that is your argument, and that is also something you want the whole class to be aware of. So that is your research assignment. What is the topic sentence? Okay? Then, remember, you and your partner need to come up with that report. Before I introduce to you this piece, I just say, well, you have a topic, and your partner has a topic. You just need to make sure 
developing a topic into a journal, sharing the idea with your partner, get feedback from your partner, you got some discussion detail. Based on your journal and the discussion detail, you compile your report. Now that is a mechanical process to understand how you can do it in the site. Now in order to give it a spirit of your own, you need to understand that this is a very good opportunity for you and your partner to come up with something really meaningful for the two of you. Maybe we want to share this whole class the topic of cyber bullying. So you and your partner need to look up the topic from the first four weeks reading this, which is appropriate enough for you to come to your topic sentence. Now what is meant by a topic sentence? Put it simply, it's your personalized question. It's a personalized question which could be accommodated under the topic question you choose in the first four weeks reading list. So do you have your personalized questions? Have you discussed with your learning partner what the two of you would like to share with the whole class? So that the two of you could selectively look for a topic which could accommodate your personalized questions and then the two of you could share something more meaningful. Ah, that's the meaning of the first learning contract, inquiry-based learning. You help the whole class to question it with something that is the interest of both of you in your head. And you structure your search process in such a way by taking advantage of the freedom to choose in this class by studying the topics presented and which topic is to select so as to accommodate your personalized question better. That is the beginning of your research assignment. I've given you two ways to look at an assignment today. The first is mechanically introduced to you. This is what you need to do. At the end of the first learning contract, you need to submit the following six artifacts. Mechanically speaking, you should be able to understand how to fulfill the requirement. But how to make it meaningful? I introduced to you you need to practice the skills of information literacy. You need to make sure you follow the rules of critical thinking. That's the whole IA process. Now, I tell you that this is your assignment. It's something you can share with the whole class by making use of this opportunity. Now, are you going to make it meaningful for yourself to do this assignment with your learning partner? It's very important that after today's class, you talk with your learning partner about what the two of you would like to do and check out with the full reading list and what topic you would like to choose and learn how to apply the discovery process to make sure you can share your findings with the whole class after submissions of your artifacts for the first learning contract because I've already invited you to do the sharing this week and also I'm going to give you the call for participation the next week. So after the submission of the other fact, you can actually come to share next week. Alright? So when you come back on first day, I'm going to show you the two subsequent steps, how to carry forward with your research assignment. So today I'm going to take attendance now and then uh, I think I still will have about 10 minutes time to entertain some questions from individual of you if you have questions about it okay so it's going to be exciting because that's your first assignment Candy Candy is not here today Candy mm -hmm. you're here thank you sorry Neil, Neil is not here, okay. Annie, thank you. And then uh, Zi Chen, Zi Chen, are you here? Zi uh, Chen, so you're not here yet. Tom, are you here Tom? Not here, okay. Connie, thank you. Uh, Sean, obviously he's not here. Duda, thank you. And then Jerry, thank you. Yes, I told you. Tammy, thank you. 
Francis. Francis. It's okay. Francis, not here. Harden. Thank you. Uh, Joanna, not here today. Peter. Thank you. Romina. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you. Sheena. Thank you. Uh, Laurie. Not here today. Okay. Kevin. Not here today yet. Okay. I can't be here yet, sorry. Yes. Alex, thank you. Ethan, thank you. Oh, you're, you're here. Uh, let me make sure that you're here. Let me come back. All right. So. Tom, are you Tom, right? Tom is here, thank you. Thank you very much. So do you have any questions? Today looks like we're doing very quickly because that is the, the last week for the first learning contract and you have to make sure you understand how to fit together in the context of information literacy. Alright? So any questions so far? You can ask me now or you can ask me uh, in Dr. Q and a hotline for this week. Okay? We have a hotline every week for you. So this is the hotline you can ask me. Okay? Make the best use of this peer online discussion forum to engage your learning partner for the specific topic of your interest. And uh, you just have one week's time to put things together, so it's very exciting. But this assignment is designed to just take you not more than six hours per week. Okay, so the two of you have 12 hours together, so it should be more than enough. All right, and this is a learning curve. Okay. Okay, up here, so any questions? So that's it for today's CISG 114, section 1, Web Technology and Light, in week number 4, day number 7. Alright. Still happy Chinese New Year's? Not yet over yet? I know that many of the secondary schools still have the, the holidays for this week. My three kids are still in the holiday mode. Okay. 